Oh, yeah. Dad, dumb it. Yeah. Sixty-three and seventy. On section seven four. All right. So. Oh yeah. So sixty-three has got a certain little thing to it that we looked at before. Seven four. So what's the first step there? Um, uh, factor. So we first step is to see what the heck I'm working with, right? So I got to see what parts I've got to play with. Uh, this guy. A plus a, a plus one, and a minus one. Beautiful. Right, little difference of squares. Bless you. Now when you can pull a negative out. Beautiful. Yeah. Now in the second one, you can be smart about it and realize if I just take an A out, it's not going to leave me with quite what I want compared to this dude. So if I take a negative A out, and the A minus a, one. I'm left with A plus minus one. Oh, yeah. okay. I suddenly noticed something. There's, so that was one thing. So this is a true for here. That was one thing we talked about before to be careful about, was when they're actually off by a negative. You stick a negative out, and suddenly they don't all. There's one other thing we talked about. Change the plus to a minus. Yeah, well, okay, so related to that, you can bring that minus up here, make it a minus there, right? You can certainly float the negative from the bottom up here. Is that is that kind of cool, I guess? Yeah, because, because we don't this negative plus negative this is this minus this. So that may kind of just bring the yeah. negative up. But this is something else, right? If I, if I say, what's he missing that he's got? Well, you got to find common denominators now. That would be the next step, but there is a little something you could do that would be kind of nice, which would make this easier. What is he missing that he's got? He's missing an A. Don't worry about the negative, I'll just bring that up there. Is that cool? You guys all right? He's not, though. He's not missing the A. The other guy doesn't have an A. Why does the other guy not have an A? Because the A's cancel. Alright, so let's look what we really got here. We got A over A plus 1, A minus 1. That's just that yeah. rewritten factor. That was <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Random sound effects. Bring that negative here, is that cool? Plus a negative fraction is just minus that fraction. I can just bring the negative here. Okay. There. And then I got 2 over. And that's much better, because now only one dude's missing something, right? What's the second dude missing? A plus one. Because remember the other day we had one that we could have canceled, but then it would need it immediately again anyway, the x minus five, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Here, the a goes away, we don't need it. Sweet, let it go away. I don't want to make that problem worse. I want to make it better. If you don't notice that, you would have just given him an a on the top and bottom. It wouldn't have really been that horrible, right? So what do I get here now on the bottom? A plus one, A minus one. Good, because I got them the same, so they stay that way when I put this together. And what do I get on the top here? A minus two, A plus Good, minus two A, minus two, I like it. Let's try to be an A. It's almost an A. Exactly, now you just get your like terms together. A minus 2A. Minus A. Minus A. Sweet. So you do kind of look for reducing up and down. You always look for that when you have a fraction, right? So no matter, even if I plug variables in there, I'm still looking to see, does something die so I don't have to worry about it? It's very bleak view. I don't worry about you too. I'm and of course, does that anything further? No, no. nothing on the top is going to cancel with the bottom. There's no twos down here, so yeah. I have a question. 
Yes. Um, in the back of the book, like there's two answers for that question, and so like I think one of the other answers, like it was pot, like no negatives at all. It was like just a plus. Yeah, two. a plus yeah. two over. Okay. Okay. You can take the negative out. Okay. Right. Cool. Because they both have a negative. Which one's the right one? Oh, the both Because of this minus right there. So it'll be a minus 2a minus 2. Okay. Yeah. Because that negative's got to go through. So you can, again, you can bring that negative. I like that, I like that look better because when it's down like that, I, I miss oh, it. Oh, yeah. So don't forget time. it. Yeah. But right in front of it, it's a minus 2a minus 2a. So what's a minus 2a? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, oh, okay, good. All right. Okay, how's that? So, anything else from homework? Okay, hopefully. Now, I noticed, I, so I've been offering my Mac Lab as an option for a long time, and I've always had about seven people sign up. I've got 23 people signed up for it now, so that's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Because it's less for me to grade me. But a few of you guys have turned stuff in and you're on my math lab. So I have no idea which way you're going to do homework. So just at some point let me know. The first one was, I asked about that because I had that. This was the asterisk one. And then there's like a couple of the other that are asterisks, but they're not in my math lab. So it's like. Oh, they are. They're in there. They're in there. Yeah. So let me show you guys. Since uh, a decent number of you guys are in there, let me show you something. All right, turn this guy on anyway. We're going to be doing some stuff on the graphing calculator. Um, I have some up here. Some of them actually turn on. I haven't gone through them to figure out who needs new batteries yet. So. Sorry, other question. Sure. Um, is it going to be like 7.1, 7.2, all the way to 7.6, and just like stop at 7.2 and then it goes 7.3? Yeah, so the last quiz went up through 7.1 effectively. Okay. So this one's going to start at 7.2 and go up through 7.6. So, so, okay. Yeah. So if you want to borrow a calculator, you can. I'll let you guys, if you grab one, you probably want to make sure it turns on real quick before you walk away. Careful. Or don't. If you feel lucky, just grab it and go. Did that one not turn on? So sorry. What's the matter? Oh. Here. <laughs> oh, those are correct. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Ah, poor little dead calculator. Nope. No one's dead. Oh, yeah. What's your name? <laughs> All right, so first thing, real quick, I want to look at my math lab real quick and just show you guys a couple. Some. So let me turn down the pillow lights. The one that says high. Yeah, just kill the high. Alright, so real quick. Well, I say real quick. It all depends on the computer. That always makes me wonder what add-in are they talking about? Oh, there's several, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. All I do is make it take longer to start up. Alright, so when you log in, 
If you're not in my math lab, do not worry. You do not need to be in my math lab. It's all right. But since almost half of you guys are, I just want to take a second uh, to show you guys. What is my password? All right, so when you log in, here's your assignments. Um, now, I just want to show you something. Now, I, I put up uh, 9394 up there, right? And I'm still working on chapter 10. Um, but see, this is chapter 7, and what I really mean, it's, uh, it's questions from 7 and 9. So it's that first homework assignment. If you put your mouse over the question, see how it says 9.63? So that's from section 9.6. So you know exactly. And, in, and when you click on it, I think it shows up. If it can stay around. Here we go. There. Right there it shows up. See there? 9.63. So it's the third question from section 9.6. Okay. Okay. So if you'll notice, your assignment's not going to be exactly the same as the other everybody else's because it doesn't, it doesn't give me every problem as available. So I just have to take as close as I can to the ones I assigned. It's the same work. It's the same problem. So don't freak out. Don't think, I'm supposed to do every fifth one. You just do every one that's in there. So if you're in my math lab, you do every single one I assigned. It's the same amount of work as the people with the book. How are we doing so far? Is that cool? Anything else about my math lab? I'll have it up. Yeah. The other tab in there that on the main screen that says, um, right over there, it says study plan. What's that about? What, what go up? Right. Oh, right. here. Yeah. What, just ignore so, it or what? So, this is, uh, oh, I, stop it. Yeah, just say continue. It should work. Okay. Um, this is totally uh, up to you if you want to do this. There's practice questions. There's little quizzes you can ask for. So it gives you practice questions related. So if you ask it for, uh, let me see, there should be a way to change section. Or I haven't, I haven't really done anything with it, so maybe I'm supposed to open this up. So, so you don't have to do anything with this. That's all I wanted to hear. Yeah. Nothing to do with it. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else about my Mac Lab while I have it up? Yeah. I you change the time. Change the what? The time. The time. Oh. Um, yeah. There's a little modify here. I don't know. I'm not too worried about, except for the fact that I do have times that it's due. Well, yeah, so... If so where does it tell you the time? Well, when you're working on the homework, it has the time at the top. And, like, when I'm working on it, it's, like, three hours ahead. Oh, but so, it should be based on your computer I think it's settings. Off, I think it's off of you, your or Eastern time, Eastern Standard. Yeah, that would be Eastern Standard, because it's three hours ahead. But I'm pretty sure it's because has anybody else noticed that same thing? Yeah, claims the same way. Really? Uh, just click down the homework. The top course homework. Yeah, there. Look there. And then it shows. No, can you go back to section seven? Don't even go to nineteen. Yeah. You see on top it says June. Yep. That's on section seven. The whole homework course. No. Yeah. The fact that it says 9 a.m. Eastern, but it's actually... Oh, right, right here. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll work on that. Don't let me forget okay. that. So it must be something on mine. It's in the module for the... So I have to, there's something I have to change that I haven't changed yet, so it's my bad. Uh, you don't have to tell if you're living on the East Coast. <laughs> I'm not trying to remember. I used to live on the East Coast, so I'm not actually, trying to... I've known a couple students to miss out on it. Anyway, so anything else about that? Don't let me forget about the time thing. Email me or something. Yeah. Uh, the, the homework you just put up, um, that's due on the 18th too? Yes, because okay. the test is going to cover up through the end of Chapter 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I did Chapter 10. Oh, I'll look at it. On the 18th? Yeah. No, no, no. No, it's Wednesday, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, now the other thing, real quick, let me show you guys a couple things here. So if you've used a scientific calculator before, 
And that's the one where you, when you type in the problem, you see the whole problem, right? Not the basic one where you type 8 times 7 and then the 8 disappeared. So if you have a really long thing to put in, that sucks. You just can't even see what's going on. So, you know, when you plug stuff in, it'll show you everything as you move along. This here button right here is your to the button. So if I want to say that to the fifth power, fifth power should. Now, if you have an older one, do you see how my exponent is like a real exponent? If you have an older one, it's just going to show up to the fifth power. It's going to be like a little older school. It's going to be like one DOS. Um, now, the mo one of the most important buttons on here, uh-oh, that one's dead too. Oh, I'll put him in there, two dead ones. Um, one of the most important buttons on here is right above this negative button. And real quick, while I'm talking about that negative button, do you see how there's a minus? Someday I'll push this and it'll work. There's a minus and there's a negative. Yeah. If you put the wrong one at the wrong time, it has a syntax error. So if you mean a negative number, you use this. If you mean something minus something else, you use this. Cool. There's a lot of errors you can get. Um, but one of the coolest things, if I had to take this, uh, well, shoot, I got a negative number. So if I had to take, um, let me see what I want to say. If I wanted to take 7 divided by this, I could say 7 divided by second negative. That little A and S right there above the negative, that holds the last number on the screen. Of course, in this case, 216 is not that long, but what if I had to do something with this number? What if I had to uh, take this number to the third power? You could do second negative and then to the third power, right? That'll take it, because that A and S is temporary memory. Temporary? I it must be <laughs> Uh Temporary memory, it always changes. Whatever was last on the screen is what's in this memory position. So it's constantly changing, right? Yes, sir. What button did you hit to get into the power? The little to the button right here, the little carrot. Oh, sure. Little to the button. See right there? Yes. Why do I get it? Let me see. Oh. Cool. Got a laser. Right, so there's my to the button right there. Okay. Um, bam. Right. Or the really cool thing, if I if I wanted to add twenty eight to this, I could just say plus, and the calculator assumes I want to add something to the last thing I add. All right, so that's little stuff, right? Um, the big thing we're going to do today, a little bit later, is start looking at how to graph stuff, and then I'm going to relate it back to stuff we've already done. Bless you. Um, and I might as well talk about it right now. Uh, somebody help me out here. How do you factor? How do you solve this here? Oh, why did I do that one? Let me make it a little different. Sorry. Give me a sec. Okay, that one. Yeah, x plus 1, x plus 5, cool. Negative one, negative five. Good, x equals negative 1, negative 5. I love it. Right? And really, if you think about it, if I take one step before this, and if I said y equals this, then what this is really saying is, how do you get y to equal 0? You let x be these two things. You with me? Mm -hmm. So that's not a big change. I said, let my function be this. Then I want to see, where is this guy equal to 0? Which means, when is the output 0? When the inputs are one of these things. So how does that relate to the graph of that function? So if I go up here to the y equals button, seems like a very important button for graphics. So I hit y equals. Now depending on if you're borrowing your calculator or not, you might have a lot of stuff in there. Get it out of there. right? Get it out of the way. Otherwise your screen's going to have all this kind of crap on it. So clear stuff out. Just go somewhere. If you have stuff in there, just go up there and hit clear. Yay! Now put in there instead 
x squared. Here's your little square button right there. There's a dedicated squared button there. Plus 6x plus 5. Your little x button is right there. You guys see? X. This is your general purpose variable button. Oh, you didn't put your X in there. Oh, you got to put your Yeah, hit that X button there first. How are we doing? Is everybody all right? Let me know now. I love technology lectures because everybody's got a different weirdness happening. But nobody has any weirdness happening? Oh, good. Thank you. That is a definite weirdness. Yeah, and now you got weirdness in there, so clear that out. And real quick, let me show you what she had. She had this. What the freak? And this is actually something called parametric equations. This is really cool. This is where you can make like spirograph stuff. You know, the, the game with the gears that fit in the other gears? When I was a little kid, we had that. That's, you know, we didn't have the internet, so all we do. Oh, look at that. You know what I'm talking about? So, but you can actually make, on the calculator, you can make those kind of graphs. It's kind of neat. Yes, sir. Uh, first, like, the white was going black. And what'd you get? Let me see. Is it the same thing you had? Yeah, I don't know. No. Oh, you got any weirdness. Even more. Now, let me show you. I'm going to do it right now. You ready? If you get something other than Y equals here, that means you're in a different mode. It's not in the right mode for, for graphing functions. Here I'm graphing parametric stuff. You're graphing sequences. Weird shit. So hit the mode button. <laughs> hit the mode button right here. You see it? Oh, cool. And basically, in, in the, the most... Um, the easiest way you can say this is you want everything on the left highlighted. You don't want anything further over highlighted. So which one's wrong? There, I want to graph a function. I don't want to graph parametric. Yours was, the last one was highlighted, right? SEQ? Because you're trying to graph sequences, and that looks even weirder because you got little Greek letters. So go down to funk. Turn on the funk. And now your Y equals stuff should be back. Yeah. Um, well, on the other thing, um, was, is float, what is float? Is that just like the format of the numbers? Float means if I put it on one, it's going to only show one decimal spot, always show one. So you would, 7 would show up as 7.0, 6.89 would show up as 6.9. I just figured out why I failed the algebra the first time. Oh my god. <laughs> it was on the wrong mode. Shit. So, <laughs> when in doubt... When something's weird's going on, check mode out and make sure everything on the left is highlighted. Nothing further over. You with me? As you go up further in math, you might start highlighting stuff over, but right now it's just going to mess things up. Um, okay. Let me let me mess something else up here real quick. Remember, I'm going to make my... Let's try and remember how it is. Yeah. So if you hit graph... Now, this is my favorite. Does some of you guys have the, the parabola showing up? Yes. Yeah. Does anybody else have measles? Does anybody else's screen has measles? Mine has measles. So, and the reason I say this is because a student actually came up and said, the calculator is measles. And I was like, <laughs> what? And here's the nice thing. Everything up here has got to do with graphing. You with me? Everything up here on the top has got to do with the graph. So just like the mode button, I want everything on the left highlighted. See up here where it says format, right above zoom? See where it says format? Yeah. So if I hit second zoom, I want everything on the left highlighted here also. So I got measles because this grid thing is on. Let me turn the grid off. So everything on the left highlighted. That's the sh real quick, uh, if something freaky is going on in your graph or in your wipels, you make sure everything is on the left <laughs> highlighted. So if I go back to graph, my graph looks like this. Mine doesn't. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mine won't graph. It just says error. Didn't mismatch? Yeah. All right, let me see. That means it's the statistical stuff. Yeah. Like if you had oh, yeah, second, quick. If you had second, y equals, turn the plot off. 
So you got a problem with your window now. All right, thank you. Which part? So here's the function, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Now don't worry, if you hit graph and yours does not look like this, I can make it look like that very quickly. Um, this is the standard screen. The standard screen goes from negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis, negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis. So if you hit zoom, and which one looks like it's going to make it standard? The one that's a standard. It's crazy. So you hit zoom number six, it'll make everybody's look like that. Oh my god, that was wonderful. Okay. <laughs> whatever, whatever does it for you. Now, yes, sir. What did you do for the error sign on the graph again? Stats. Oh, you had the dim mismatch. Yeah. Go second y equals. Do you see any of them turned on? Uh, yeah. Does this name say plot one? Yeah. Turn them off. Oh, yeah, wow. You totally. All right, so first thing is let me turn. Actually, let me just turn them all off. Holy crap. All right, turn them all off. And secondly, now we zoom. Six for zoom standard. You can just hit the number six also. Coolness. Just go over off and hit enter. Oh no, no, that last one turns them all on. So you have three plots up there. Make sure they're all off. Oh, is everybody else all right? Everybody that has a calculator, yeah. Test is on Wednesday. <laughs> All right, how are we doing? Yes, sir. Say again. No, I'm playing. Oh, that's your first no. All right, now real quick. What were the answers to this? When was Y zero? Negative one, negative five. Good. So here, what represents Y equal to zero? X axis. Because here, Y is negative one here, right? Y is negative two here. So y is 0 here. And when y is 0, what's x look like it is? Negative 1. Negative 5. Holy shit. Right? So this is actually a way you can factor some things. Oh, I just let out a big... Oh. But, you know, you're supposed to be able to use this thing, right? So if you're careful, you can actually factor it. The worse this gets, though, the harder it is to interpret what that's saying. So I'm going to leave it right there. Yeah. For right now. Later we'll get deeper. So, so can I get you to, to show us plot point? Can I get you to like like on here you know how they go on there, they say plot a point and then you zoom into it and then you plot it and you put the then the cursor um, Oh trace it you mean. Is that what it is? Trace? Yeah. Yeah, you can trace this thing to get a feel for where it there is. There we go. So you see? know what the thing is. But look at what it's doing. Is it doing what I want it to necessarily? Mm -hmm. Like if I want to know what the lowest point is. Do I know for sure that's the lowest point? Well, you have to zoom it, right? Oh, so. It looks to me that he's trying to be negative 4. See how close that is to negative 4? But the calculator, when you trace, it's going to kind of bounce. It's not going to show you everything, or else that would take, you know, forever. But it's going to bounce around, and it's not going to bounce around to the nice numbers. It's going to bounce around to whatever the hell it wants to show you. So there are other ways to find specific points. We're not going to do that yet. How'd you do that? Do what? Trace. Hit trace. Hit the button that says trace. Uh -huh. They hide these things. All right, cool. So there's a whole procedure actually for finding the minimum of any function. That's what I was asking about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you yet. If you happen to find it, cool for you. But I think you're going to catch on pretty quick that I'm a by hand kind of guy. 
So I don't show you anything on the calculator until we've done it by hand. <laughs> oh, yes. Cool. So it, it happens to be that you gave us a problem like that and about the showing the work part. So like if you just put in the calculator, what would be like, like that? We just, if you just put the points with that part. No. So this does not constitute work. That was the joke I had about your calculator going on to the next level. Yeah. Right? And you'll be stuck here. Yeah, it's not good. You want to pass. The calculator can pass this course of problems. And then I use the arrow scenario so that you don't Oh, uh, left and right moves you. Right, I'm using this, and it's not moving. It just keeps going back to 31. Free. Okay. Up and down would go between graphs if I had more than one graph on there. bad boy up. We'll do some stuff. There will be on tests and in the homework there will be certain problems that you have to do in the graphing calculator because not everything is factorable. So if I wanted to find the answer, there are ways to do it by hand, but I can also ask you to do it in the calculator. So you will have to kind of know how to use this calculator, right? The calculator, you can't use it to answer everything, but you also can't not use it. You've got to find the middle ground. Yeah. Okay, so anything else about the calculator while I have that up here? Okay, all right. Uh, so let's get back into chapter 7. Let's finish this out. Section 7, 7. So we turn the lights back on. I have a question. Yeah. Um, how many quizzes have you ever had? They're just random. Uh, I never really know ahead of time. Um... At most, probably two quizzes before each test. Oh, okay. So at most, eight quizzes, right? But sometimes you might have one quiz before ten. It all depends on how we're doing. Um, okay, so section 7-7 seven, seven is our word problem section for rational expressions. Somebody help me out. Let me, I'm going to start with a specific type of uh, example problem. Um, somebody help me out. What's the formula that relates distance, rate, and time? Dirt. I love it. Right? D-E-R-T. Dirt. And we all do this. And hopefully you guys do this. When you're driving, you're trying to figure out how much longer it's going to take for you to get somewhere. What if I go 800? What if I go 100? How long would it take? Um, <laughs> so if, if I, if I uh, let, let me ask you this, a little simple question. Uh, if uh, I had to go, um, 80 miles and I was going 35 miles an hour, can you guys figure out how long it would take me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. How would you do that? A 
Can you do what now? No, no, no. You're thinking the right way, but insert D equals RT, period. But I could take this and solve for T. I like that your suggestion is not to plug the numbers in yet, because personally I would rather figure out what formula I should use. So if D equals RT, what's, how do I get T by itself? Good. So time equals distance divided by rate. All right, so if you got 80 miles to go and you're going 35 miles an hour because there's a cop on your tail and that's the speed limit, and you're like, turn off. Um, I don't drive like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you can figure out how long it's going to take you to get there, right? Now, obviously, if I if it was if I went for two hours, how long would how far would I go? 70. 70. So it's going to be a little bit more than two hours, right? So let's see what we get. So time equals distance divided by rate. Time equals 2.2. Well, help me out. So 80, 80 over 35. 35, right. which is 2.28 roughly. 2.29, even better. Hours, right? Does anybody have any idea how to approximate? Exactly how long that is. Like, you wouldn't tell. I wouldn't say, oh, it's going to be. I'm going to be about 2.29 more hours. <laughs> right? That's not an answer that I would normally expect. Uh, so I'd say two hours in how many minutes? Not 29 minutes, right? Because there aren't a hundred minutes in an hour. If there were a hundred minutes in an hour, that would be 29 minutes, right? Because that's 29 hundreds. But how would I figure out exactly how many minutes 0.29 represents? So two hours and 0.29 hours. Well, how many minutes is an hour? 60. So this is 0.29 times 60 minutes. What's 0.29 times 60? 17.4. Yeah, almost 18. So I'd say about two hours, 18 minutes almost, 17 if you round down. You guys kind of with me? No. What's up? Oh, it's just the 0.2960. So, so, I got it. You know, like 0.5 hours, of course, would be how many minutes? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Because I replace hours with 60 minutes. And then I can figure out how many minutes it is. So I take half of an hour. So this is 29 hundredths of an hour. Of, of course, means multiply when you're dealing with percentages and fractions. Are you guys with me? So 29 hundredths of an hour is 29 hundredths times 60 minutes. Because I'm, a, you know, if I'm a student, I'm getting answers like 7.139 hours. Part of me is kind of like, this is the only place I see that is in math class. What is, what is this bullshit? So you can always change it to actual minutes. You know, something we'd be more used to. Yes. Do we have to change it to actual minutes on the test? Only if I ask. <laughs> yeah, for a proper unit, right? right? Yes, cool. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just that we don't see this in real life. We see so many hours and so many minutes. Okay. Um, so that's very basic problem, just dealing directly with distance equals rate times time. So let's look at something we'd actually see in 7.7. You know it's not going to be that easy. Uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I love it. All right, here we go. So this is on page uh, 489. Number 22. The one about the lazy river.
All right. So does anybody fish or anything or uh, go boating or anything? Do you guys get out of the house? Yeah. Hold on. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so obviously you know that uh, at certain times of the day, I, I used to go kayaking all the time. Um, it's really got interesting when the, the great white got off the coast. I was like, oh shit, I've been over. But um, you know that when you're when the current's coming in, when the when it's coming in, you have to you're going out. It's going to be going to be tougher to move. So it makes sense that it's going to take me long. Uh, in the same amount of time, I'm going to go a shorter distance upstream against the current than I would with the current going downstream, right? So the current is going at a four mile an hour at this certain time of day. It's coming in four mile an hour. Um, and there's two definite separate situations here, right? She's going upstream and she's going downstream. You with me? So one thing that this section does a lot of, which is not a bad idea, is it uses a little chart to kind of gather everything. Yeah. So I always do rate times time equals distance. This is really just an organizational method. If you don't want to use this chart, if you don't need to, kick ass. And the two situations, what can I call them? Upstream, upstream. downstream. Yeah, up and down, like upstream, downstream. Now, what do I know for sure? No question about both of those situations. The time is the same. Yeah, it goes, the same, it goes this in the same amount of time. I love it. So the time is the same. I like it. But what else do I know specifically for sure? The current is the same. Distance. Distance I know for sure. So upstream she goes 6 and downstream it's 12. Cool. How fast is she going? So the question is, what's the question? Uh, how fast is the dinghy going? It's still water. Exactly, it's still water because the course is going a little faster downstream, but the dinghy is still going so, at speed. But the whole thing is the, the current's moving, so it's going to go faster. You think? So the rate upstream would be x minus four. The rate downstream would be x plus four because we're trying to. Good. Fly. So let's catch up to that. So how fast is the dinghy going? X. X, but we don't know what the hell it is. So an algebra course, and you know in word problems, if you do a whole problem without using a variable at all, you have basically done it wrong, even if you get the right answer. This is algebra class, so let go. I got the right answer. No, you're supposed to learn algebra in algebra class, so you have to use algebra on these problems. You with me? So just get over the fact that I'm going to take points off if you don't, even if you got the right answer. So how fast is the D going? X. Mile an hour, right? So how fast is it going upstream when it's fighting against the current? Yeah, well, how it normally goes, minus four. And of course, how fast is it going downstream with the current? X plus four. Yeah, how are we doing so far? So the fact that the times are the same is what I'm eventually going to use to set up my equation. Whatever's here is going to have to be the same as whatever's here. They have to equal each other, right? That's what this says, same, same amount of time. But right now, just based on these, what can I put here? What did we just figure out? Distance equals rate times time. Time equals... Yeah. Distance over rate. That's the problem we just did, right? Mm -hmm. So if time is distance over rate for upstream, what's the time? Six over eight. Exactly. Cool. And of course for downstream, Six over careful. Twelve. Twelve X over x plus four. <clears throat> How you guys doing? So this chart helps a lot because then it becomes a problem of I just got to fill in each spot and once I got two spots filled in I can use the formula to figure out the third spot then I step back and go okay how does something relate here these two are equal that's my equation cool and this is so foreign to us I totally understand because you're like this is just has no meaning to us at the moment but if x were 8 for example what would this be? If, if she could go 8 mile an hour in that dinghy, that dinghy can go 8 mile an hour, 
This would be 6 over 8 minus 4. It would be 6. 3 over 2. 3 over 2. So it would be in an hour and a half. You, you with me? So never forget that, of course, things in a problem in algebra will look weird because there's a part of it we don't know. And it, so I can't combine it with something else. So normally, if I knew that was 8, I could say that's 6 over 4, that's 3 halves, it's an hour and a half. There you go. That's the real world, Jeff. This ain't the real world. Yeah, this is the real world. This is more real world than that. Very often, we don't know something in the real world. Yeah? You just like do it like a fraction problem. X minus 4, put a 1 underneath it, cancel them out. And your time would be 6, your distance would be 6, so it would just equal 1 hour. Wait, I am not sure what you're saying. Okay. So are you saying to do some of these? Yeah, like it says rate times time. I love it. So does this here, does it make sense with what we, this times this is this? That's true. Does it help me figure out what X is? No, because the X part cancels. So I can't use that to figure out what X is. I can use that to make sure that this seems coherent, that that seems like it goes together, right? And it does go together. That times that is six. So she's going that fast for that long, she will go six miles, right? Whatever the hell these are. But it doesn't help me figure out X. Here, between these two, if I say that must equal that, because it said same time, right? Just what would the equation look like? 6 over x minus 4 equals... And of course, how do you solve that? Cross multiply. I love it. Because the bottoms have nothing in common. Cross multiply. Same thing as that method, so either way, okay. I like it. Is that cool? You guys with me? Yeah. Let's cross multiply six times this, bam, twelve times that. Bam. Subtract 6x, add 48, divide by 6, x is 12. So what does that mean? Continues going, I love it. 12 miles per hour. That's all I want to know, right, is how fast is the dinging itself going. Now, so upstream she's going... Eight mile an hour, right? And downstream she's going sixteen. Sweet. How long did it take her to go upstream? What's X? X is twelve. Yeah, so six over twelve minus four, six over eight, three quarter of an hour, forty five minutes. I love it. So it took her forty five minutes to go upstream, and it took her 12 over 12 plus 4, 12 sixteenths. You guys kind of with me? All I'm doing is plugging back in what x is, right? Because now we know what it is. So it took her 45 minutes to go upstream, and it takes her 12 sixteenths, which is... Yeah, because again, that's 3 fourths, so another 45 minutes to go downstream. So how does that a nice check? How is that a nice check? Because they're the same. Thank God, right? Yes, sir. Are those fours or are those Ys? Four. Four. Oh, here? What he just wrote? Uh, yeah. yeah, those are fours. Okay. Cool. So then that says six X plus 24 below. Yes, it does. Yes. Okay. Cool. I like it. Yes. If I plug in uh, x is 12, all right? So if I say so for this guy, if x is 12, I get 6 over 8, which is three quarter of an hour. What's three quarters of an hour? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Sweet. 
that one we only have to do the math for. But if we did the math, it'd be three fourths of 60 minutes. Four goes into 60, 15, 15 times three is 45 minutes. But we don't have to do that. We know what three quarter of an hour is. Okay, good. Yes? Do you always have to like subtract? I mean, do you want the X on the right side or the left side? Because I did it to the left side, I got a different X. Well, if you, if you subtract 12x, you should get negative 6x here. Subtract 24, you should get negative 72. Yeah. yeah. You'll just get negatives of what I got, but then when you divide, the negatives will cancel. Yeah. Doesn't matter which side you put it on, yeah. Okay. Get this general vibe of you're so excited about this. Okay. Uh, let's do another one, and then I'll have you guys try a few on your own. <laughs> It's easy once you start. I remember doing it. I remember Now, I, I really, I want you to understand that the reason we do word problems is because that's getting closer to real life. I mean, a lot of the math we learn, very often it's hard to immediately apply it to real life because it's just like basic skills. It's just, like if you play basketball, Balance is important for basketball. I don't know if you know this or not, but so very often if you go to a training camp, if they're a really good training camp, they'll actually work on your balance. They'll do that for a lot of sports. In basketball, when do you want to be on the court doing this? Never. Never, but holy shit, it builds into it, doesn't it? So a lot of the skills we learn in math doesn't seem to immediately apply to real life. But then when you hit some of these word problems, which is real life, then you'll start to realize, oh, I need these little skills that we were working on to do this problem. Right. All right, so you ended that for public service announcement. Um, <laughs> let's do one more of these distance rate time problems. Let's see. Something a little bit different. Oh, yeah, this is different. Number 26. Tori and Emilio's motorboats travel at the same speed. Tori pilots her boat 40 kilometers. Emilio goes for another two hours and goes a total of 100 kilometers. How long did it take Tori to go? Spell long jump. That's the question. How long did it take Tori to go the 40 kilometers? So this is why the chart's kind of nice. There's a lot of disparate information that you have to kind of bring together. So it's kind of nice to have these little spots just to fill in. Uh, now, of course, what's the uh, two situations? I love it. So the situations, we'll give them just the people's names. We got Tori doing her thing, and Emilio. So funny. I remember when it was Meg and Bob, and that was it. Um, so here we got uh, rate times time equals distance. So what what can we fill in for sure? Two distance. Now this is this is for two more hours. So Emilio didn't go two hours. He went two more hours than Tori did. Good. So if Tori went x hours, Emilio went x plus two. Tori went forty kilometers. Emilio went hundred. So what can I put here and here? Yeah, so if D equals RT, see I've got two things, I've only got one spot left in each, right? I can use this formula to fill this in using these. You see the idea? So if distance equals rate times time, rate is equal to distance over time. We know that, miles per hour. So rates, of course, is distance over time. So what do I put right here? 40 over, 40 over x. Good. Check it. Rate times time equals distance. Check. Kick ass. And of course, what do I put there? 
100 over pixels. And of course, where does my equation come from? They're going the same speed. I love it. If they would have said, uh, Tori is going 10 mile an hour faster than Emilio, then it would have been uh, this equals this plus 10. But they're the same speed. They just equal each other directly. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? This eventually is going to set up my equation for me. Whatever the expression is for speed, for both of them, I'm going to set them equal because it's the same speed. Just like the last problem, same time. So what's my equation? 40 over x. 40 over x. It was 100 over x plus 2. So a lot of these will come out to be cross multiplication problems, which is always nice because that's pretty simple. So here you get 40x plus 80 equals 100x. So you get 80 equals 60x. Is that cool? Yeah. And then x equals 4 thirds, right? 80 over 60. Yeah, so a third of a, an hour is 20, I like it, so it's an hour and 30 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and, that, and, and the nice thing is, pay attention to what the question is. The question is just, how long is Tori going for? Do we, we, do we have the answer? Yeah, because Tori was going X, and we know X is an hour and 20 minutes. Or one and a third hours is fine, too. Somebody might say that, he wouldn't freak out. How are we doing? Is that cool? So we see where the 20 came from? Yes? So we would get the problem, we get 20 off, and we just put four thirds as our answer? Uh, if you put four thirds hours, okay. then I really couldn't take any point. But you have to put okay. the units down. Right, we'll put the units. But you don't want to, I mean, it doesn't matter if you convert it into an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, unless I say specifically you have to do that, I, you can't, I can't argue that, you know, you're like, well, it's the. It's Units are there, it's four thirds of an hour. Yeah. Although you would never hear somebody say that in real life. You still get the right answers, okay? Um, okay, cool. How's that? So here's one for you to do. Uh, See so if you have the book. Let's do number. Twenty nine. Page four ninety. don't have the book, I still want you to do that. Oh. <laughs> now we got these un-American units here, yeah. What most of the rest of the world uses. Not exactly like either of the ones we did. This is the same. Oh, calm down. Still, distance equals rate times time. You still want to use the chart. You still want to fill things in. It just doesn't have the same relationship. 
Otherwise, it'd be the same problem and we wouldn't be learning anything new. So let's see if we can set this up correctly. One thing to be careful about is it's not going for the same amount of time each way. So you can't just say it's seven and seven. Right? Because it's going faster one way than the other, right? So you have no idea how much time it's going either way. No, you don't know it's the same. It's just the same time it takes to go. 29? It just said 20. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay. I'm just going to say it, man. If they said that, then the whole thing goes out. just a little bit. What's your X represent in this problem? Speed of current, right? Speed of current. X, right? So how fast is the barge going upriver against the current? X minus seven. Okay, seven minus X. Seven minus X. So upriver, it normally goes seven. So if it goes against the current, it's going to go its normal speed minus how much the current's pushing against it, right? So the biggest mistake to make there is it would be x minus 7 is wrong. 7 minus x, right? How fast is it going down river uh, with the current? 7 plus x. 7 plus x, because now the current is helping it move. It's going faster. 7 plus x. Draw you a little chart. Fill in what you can. You actually have everything you need now. What goes in that last spot? There? What's the distances for both? So the middle spot you fill in using the formula, T equals RT. You don't even have to worry about how to fill it. to play in here. No. That's where your equation is going to come from. Whatever these times are, they better add up to be 14, because it's a total time of 14. You see what I'm saying? So the last two, the two that we did together, we set things equal to each other, because it was the same time, the same speed. Here it's saying a total time of 14. Okay, they got to add the B14. I know how to set that kind of equation up. No big deal. So, some of you guys are realizing that the one evil thing you can do to yourself is to continue trying to fill these in. The minute I've got two spots filled in, the third spot fills itself in. What would go here? 45 over that, right? Because rate time is distance divided by rate. So, right there is 45 over 7 minus x. Here is. 45 over 7 plus x. Yes, sir. When setting that up equals. My question is that it equals 14 hours. No, no, no. The, the two times have to add to be 14 hours. So it equals 14. Yeah. Now, is this one where you can immediately cross multiply? No. Hell no. You got too many things you're going on.
I really want you guys to realize one piece of information somewhere that they gave me is not going to show up here because I need something to tell me what the equation is. And an equation is a relationship between things. So the two that we did together, one thing equaled the other thing. Same speed. Okay, cool. I'm going to set the speeds equal. Same time. Okay, cool. I'm going to set the times equal. Here, the time is a total of 14. Okay, so I'm going to add these to make 14. That, there's always going to be one thing they tell me that is used to set my equation up. It's not used here at all. You guys see that? Does that make sense? Because once you get two of these filled in, the third one fills itself in. You just do the division, whatever you have to divide to make the equation work. Right? So now, how do I set up the equation? Yeah, this time plus, plus that time equals 14. Equals 14. Cool. That looks gross. I like it. my high tech eraser. I just got to remember how to solve an equation like that. Let me help out a little bit. This is over one. Yes, sir. Is that the only way you can do it? Or is there another way? There's another way. How did you do it? Uh, well, I was about to do it um, pretty much three times time equal distance, like separate problems. But there's not enough information in either one of these to give you an answer. You have to use them together somehow. Either one of these by themselves, I can set up a, a, an expression with x in it, but I can't solve for x. There's not enough information. I've got to use both together to get my answer. Right? So you, we use distance rate time to set this up. But it doesn't give me an answer. Doesn't tell me what x is. You got me? Because this is the restriction. It's got to be a total time of 14 hours. That's what makes x be something specific. X has to be the specific number to make this add to 14. That's why I've got to set up an equation. I can solve it now. So how do I solve this thing? What do I do? You. Yeah. What's he need? And what's he need? Minus x. He needs both. Oops. And this guy, yes, he needs everything. Right? We just did that kind of thing. Right? So now, of course, word problems are always, they make things a little worse because you're actually dealing with stuff from this paragraph of real world stuff and you got to put it all in the right place and then you end up in a place that would be a problem from a couple sections ago and then some of you guys are like well that was hard enough already now i got to make my own damn equation up shit but this isn't too bad right i mean we've done several of these hopefully this isn't too bad so now uh i can multiply by the lcd band it kills all these so i get <laughs> 15 plus 45x. And whatever the hell this is, 14 times, just putting these together. 6 and 6. Are we got, is it right cool? Just multiply stuff out so you get, and the x's cancel on that side, equals 686. And then, and then, where do you go from there? All right, subtract six eighty six. A beautiful thing. Four, four. four equals x squared. X plus two. 
2, we can automatically eliminate the negative option, right? Because x represents, where did x go? It's a speed. And since it's a speed, it can't be negative. Velocity could be negative. Don't bring that out. Speed cannot be negative. Nah, nah. So what the hell does this mean? X equals 2 what? Who? 2 kilometers per hour. Yeah, the speed of the current is 2 kilometers per hour. Wasn't that awesome? Which part? So, so I really... There are a few places where I use these little uh, charts, and they're not they're really good for when you have a lot of information. So then you can just focus. I knew I could put 45 there immediately, right? There's no question. And this upriver, downriver thing, we should start getting used to. It's going to be a something plus something, and then there's something minus that thing, right? I know it's going to have that option. That current's going to be working with me, against me. So I can kind of figure out how to write these. And the minute I get two filled in, the third one is automatically filled in just by solving this equation. Time is distance over rate. Distance over rate. Bam! And then I step back and I say, what's my relationship? Are these things equal? Do they add to be something? Do they subtract to be something? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes? How would you know when to, um, like, if it's a proportional like? Oh, you can't know ahead of time. But the minute I set up the equation, I knew I couldn't. Yeah, but how do you? I think what you might be getting at is how do you know, I want to, to know set it up properly? Well, I have to set the equation up this way because I know that the times add up to be 14. Right? No question that the equation gets set up this way. Yeah. This time plus that time equals that. And the only time I'm allowed to cross multiply is if I have one fraction equals one fraction. Because then there's a definite place for everything to go. Here, what would go where? How would cross multiplication work? If it was this, I could do it. Like 14 over 1, I could cross multiply. So if that equal sign wasn't there, you could... If that equal sign was there, if this wasn't there, then I have one fraction equals one fraction, I could cross multiply. It, it doesn't just like, depend on the word problem. However, the equation gets set up. The two that we did together earlier, they ended up being fraction equals fraction. We could cross multiply. This one does not fraction equals fraction. It's fraction plus fraction equals fraction. So I can't cross multiply. It's just because of the way the equation looks. Yeah. So I didn't know how you were asking if you, like, how do you know ahead of time? You don't. You just wait till you get to the equation and go, oh, there's too many stuff to, to cross multiply. I have to do it that way. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you already answered this, but whatever you're after the two, and you figure out you're usually using that for the rest of the problem. Oh, like here? No, if they would have. Like, what? For the time. And you see how it's 45. Seven. Yeah, if they would have asked, I think they only asked what the speed of the current was, right? So, a really good thing now is to check and make sure we answer the question. Yeah. But if they would have said, um, how long did it take to go upstream? Then you throw you 2 in 45 over 5. So it took 9 hours to go upstream. So how long did it take to go downstream? 45 over 9, that's 5. 5 and 9, 14, think up. But the, all they asked for this problem was how fast is the current going? Cool. Yeah? Uh, can you multiply, um, is there a way to multiply minus x by the entire fraction? Uh, 45 over 7 minus x, and then does that equal to I'm not sure. How do you mean? Like, you know the cross multiplying? Yes. After multiplying, like, you can have the upstream and downstream, and you were combined on uh, 7 minus x with the time, and, and then the downstream with its rate of time, and then cross multiply. No, because then you just get 45 and 45, which has no x's in it. So, I, yeah, I appreciate, trust me, because you look at it the same way I do. I always try to figure out the quickest way to get something done. My homework was always the smallest stack when I turned it into my professor. And sometimes it drove him crazy, right? Because it's like, you need to do some work, and now I'm making you guys work. 
But <laughs> so I, I appreciate trying to find a quicker way. There is no quicker way here, really. Except for, you know, guess and check. And if you do that crap, I'm going to throw it back at you, right? So no guessing and checking. Oh, it's a two. It didn't work. No, right. no, right. Don't plug something in and see if it works. No, I want to see the algebra. Because, I mean, you will get answers like two. But, of course, in the real world, you get an answer like 1.87334442. And if you get that by guess and check, you're spending too much time on guess and check. Yeah. So I know that that actually worked out really well to get the two. But, I mean, hypothetically, would you really want to do it? That, I mean, wouldn't you want to break it down to the x equals zero to solve for zero thing eventually? Only if, uh, oh yeah, if there would have been another x piece, if these wouldn't have canceled? Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying like in general, because I know a lot, a lot our problems are never going to be that, that nice where 14 goes into 56. No, even if it didn't, even if I had, you know, x squared equals 11.9. Yeah. How do we do from here to here? Well, you do the square root. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. And you normally be plus or minus, but we know the minus is not good. And then you just throw it in the calculator if you want to get a approximate answer. But you're going to want to see the, the square root of Yeah, I want to see this work, and then you can put the number if you want to. Because again, you? nobody would go, the current's going about square root 11.9. <laughs> no. So, I mean, if you stop there, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't bust you on that. But you show me this, and then you show me the approximation. Okay, so yeah. Good. You guys with me? <laughs> the waves would be about square root of 11.29 feet today. What? <laughs> but for our, our, our tense of purposes, leaving the square root as the answer is fine. Unless yes. Yes. I say yes hesitantly because, again, uh, I like the answer to end up in a way that we would normally answer something. Okay. Right? And I want, because I want people to really make the connection that math is not something separate from the real world. Math is how we get to things that you hear about in the real world. So nobody would say square root of 11.9 uh, kilometers an hour. They'd probably right. say something like it's uh, going about. Yeah, exactly. You do square root of 11.9 and then you round it. I love it. Cool. But if you stop there, you did all the work correctly. I'm not going to beat you up on that. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So four equal x squared, how do you get x squared? How do you undo a square? Yeah. No, no. You got four equal x squared. I like it. So how do you undo a square? Right. How do you undo a square? What's the opposite oh, of a square? What's the opposite? Six times x squared. Whatever you have minus. No. I mean x. What's the opposite of a second power, a second root? Right? Roots are the opposite of powers, right? That's great. So you would take a square root of both sides. Mathematically, you would normally immediately put a plus or minus there, right? Yep, but we know that negative is not going to be a part of this because it's about a speed. Now, real quick, just on the side here, a little side note. Um, just show the connection to what we're doing. So if you get to this point, you can subtract 4 over. Because then what can you do with this? Then you get x equals 2 or negative 2, and you throw negative 2 out. Yeah. It's just that when you have a variable squared equal a number, okay. you really don't have to do that. You just take a square root directly. You kind of with me? Or you can pull a number over, factor it, so it looks more like what we're doing in the last couple sections. But I really don't mind just taking a square root directly. Okay, anything else? All right, okay. So let's look at one other kind of problem in this section. Um, and it's, a, it's the work problem. Um, and, and you see this kind of equation, even in physics a lot, you see this kind of equation. So I'm going to set it up a little differently than the book does. So if, if I can mow a lawn alone, I can mow a lawn in... Uh, three hours. It's a big ass lawn. And this other dude down the street, he could mow the lawn. Uh, my competition, we'll call him dude, can mow the lawn in two hours because he cuts corners and he does a horrible job. He shouldn't hire him. Thankfully, I don't have to mow lawns through something. Um, 
if we work together, if we put our differences aside and we work together, how long would it take us to mow? Now, obviously, it would take us less than how many hours? Two hours. Two hours. It would take me as less than two, because dude can do it on his own in two hours. But he's lazy. He might just let you do all the work. Let's assume <laughs> that I won't let that happen, right? And I'll make sure he does his work, or else he ain't getting much amount of money. He wants the money. Um, so I could do one lawn in three hours. Dude can do one lawn in two hours. If we work together, we could do one lawn in X hours. Now be careful, don't put a five there, right? Then you'd say that it takes us five hours. That doesn't make any sense. Is that because we keep running to each other and oh, I hate you, I hate you, now we gotta work. <laughs> you guys kinda with me? I mean that's kinda nice. And and the real reason that it works this way is because if I multiply the X up, one third of all the work plus one half of all the work equals one whole work. So I mean uh, but I like this way better, it just makes more sense. One lawn in three hours. Together with a guy that can do one lawn in two hours, makes it one lawn in I don't know how many hours, and then I can solve for it. How the hell do I solve that? Solve the denominator. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what's he need? 2x. Good, 2x. 3x. 3x. And 6. And 6. So then I can multiply by 6x, bam, bam, bam. Because it's an equation, right? So I can, I'm allowed to do it so I get... 2x plus, plus, plus 6. 6. 5x. 5x equals 6. x equals 6, six fifths of an hour, which is 1 hour. About 10, 10 minutes. 12 minutes. 12 minutes, there you go. 1 hour, 12 minutes. So that's the work problem. Right? So you can do uh, one report in and five hours, and somebody else can do one report in six hours, but if you work together, how long would it take you to do one? That kind of thing, right? Now, obviously, that is simplifying things. I love the fact that you guys brought in all the kind of background psychology of this problem, right? Well, maybe you guys don't get along. Maybe you gotta get each other's way, or maybe, you know, whatever. This is just bare bones uh, math that's stripping away all the humanity. <laughs> it's too bad, right? It's just saying you guys work, you're robots, you're machines. But that kind of problem is pretty easy to set up and pretty damn easy to solve, right? It's a lot better than the distance rate time problem that just has a little more, more going on. Okay. Is there anything about that? That's basically what I want to show you from 7-7. What kind of problem would you like um, Like number 12. It says the Honeywell EnviroCare Silent Comfort Air Cleaner can clean the air in a room in 10 minutes. The blue air air purifier can clean the air in a room in 12 minutes. How long would it take them to work to do this? So it would be one room in 10 minutes plus one room in 12 minutes equals one room in X minutes. Okay. And then you solve it. Okay. Cool. So it's not going to get much more difficult than that. So you got to like that. Yes? So there is, is there like a formula for this? Isn't it like 1 over A plus Yes, 1 over A plus 1 over B and equals 1 over X. Oh, okay. Where A and B are the times it takes the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Cool. Okay. Um, so, I'm trying to think. You guys want to take a break right now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no. All right, so come back uh, about quarter till.